science has made remarkable progress in recent years. People and information cross national boundaries, but cause unrest at the local level. Will human beings be able to control AI, or will it come to control us? Is science a tool for international contention rather than a common good shared by human? How can we use science to lift up and unite people on a global scale? These interdisciplinary dialogues will offer diverse perspectives to help shape her future for the better. Tokyo Forum 2021. Science and the human mind. Next, we'll hear from Che Taewon, chairman of SK Group, one of South Korea's largest conglomerates. Mr. Che has supported a number of international forums in Asia, including Beijing Forum, Shanghai Forum, and Tokyo Forum. In order to bolster academic exchanges and the creation of a common intellectual platform in the region. So here's Mr. Che. Good morning and welcome to the third edition of Tokyo Forum. May I begin by thanking our distinguished speakers who shall be joining us from around the world. This year's theme is Shaping the Future, Science and the Human Mind. It could not be more timely or the better chosen as we continue to overcome the pandemic. It points our collective responsibility to bring about a better world for future generations. Clearly, and to achieve these goals, we must look to science, technology, and the limitless potential of the human mind. But as I see it, the greatest challenge it's not so much technology as a human resolve. Take climate crisis, for instance. A range of technologies already exist today to help meet our net zero emission goals. New transformational technologies are also being developed in research labs around the world as we speak. What is missing, however, as a collective of political will to commercialize these technologies at speed and scale. What is missing is a robust framework to help us implement workable solutions. Sadly, the recent COP26 conference is emblematic in this regard. Through over 200 countries, the struck a deal to ax the fossil fuel subsidies and to face down coal. But the conference also showcased deep divides and rivalries. It highlighted the worrying divergences in interest and the responses across the countries and the industries. These divergences that undermine our effort toward aggressive climate action, uncoordinated policies on the natural transition will bring about a shocks and a cascading effects. This will exacerbate the divides between the countries and the societies. In the end, a disorderly transition will serve to deter the crucial investment and widen the funding gap for green technology. And so we must work harder to build a, the coordinate response. Each of us has a the crucial role to play. And the countries such as Japan are showing us the way. A good example is a Japan's recently minted the Asia Green Growth Partnership. 
which was hosted by METI and uh, convened some 20 nations in Asia and beyond. The central idea to this partnership is that there is no single pathway toward the transition, that countries must adopt technologies that works for them and their unique social and economic circumstances. This is something which makes sense to me, as a one-size-fits-all approach is bound to fail. Let us instead work to support one another and to overcome challenges through the partnership, the coordination, and the investment. The Japan's initiative also demonstrates that there is a strong case for public-private collaboration, that the private sector has a crucial role to play, that given the right set of incentives, the corporates has the technological know-how and the financial expertise to deploy the green technology. The corporations can work across jurisdictions. They can adapt quickly to assist unique transitional pathways, and the corporate players are rising to the occasion. Still in Japan, the Japan Climate Initiative has seen 92 corporates to call on the Japanese government to raise its uh, renewable energy target to 40 to 50 percent of the power mix. These are all companies that support the early 100 and the other carbon neutrality initiatives. Another great example from Japan is uh, Tokyo Green the Finance Initiative, which built on the Tokyo Green Bonds and the ESG Fund. This initiative supports the corporate investment in decarbonization and the development of environmentally friendly technologies. And at SK, we are also doing our best to support the transition in the split of public-private collaboration we are, for example, the developing an environmental protection credit mechanism, or EPC. The core idea is to offer incentives so that companies can voluntarily take a part in reducing carbon emissions. If we are to achieve our natural goals, we need to stick to the enforce, but also carrots to incentivize. Our EPC initiative proposes to finance green projects globally by encouraging capital and the participation from the financial markets. At SK, we are fine-tuning this idea so that it can be implemented. We are look forward to the presenting a workable solution in the near future. But to conclude, and as this example suggests, the technology will only solve our most depressing challenges if you are adopting a collective mindset and articulate a coordinated response. Let us therefore the harness science, the technology, and the human mind to shape a more prosperous, resilient, and a sustainable future. I am grateful to Tokyo University and the Chase Institute for Advanced Studies for putting together such an important event. We have a lot of work to do. Let us start now to bring about a real change. Goodbye for now, and I wish you all very best. <laughs>